Hi, my name is Fernando and I'm a web designer developer that uses Atom in conjunction with Yeoman, Bauer, and Grunt for development uh, stack workflow. And this video is to kind of give you uh, a glimpse into the benefits of, of that kind of workflow. Um, it took me a long time to switch over to this workflow and at the beginning I was frustrated uh, in a lot of phases because I didn't understand how everything was set up and I was used to more of like the, you know, just simple, straightforward Dreamweaver or just full, you know, your own folder and, and, and those kind of approaches to uh, uh, development, right? But once you, once you realize uh, the benefits and uh, the loss of wasted time, you become sold. So I'm going to just start with Atom, right? Atom is a text editor made by GitHub. Uh, they're competing, or at least I think they're competing with Sublime Text. If you use Sublime Text, you'll notice the similarities immediately upon opening it up or just by looking at this picture that is on the screen right now. Uh, they have um, Atom is supported on Mac, Windows 7, 8, uh, Red Hat Linux, and Ubuntu Linux. So it's got a pretty good spread in terms of operating system support and uh, you know I'm just gonna go use their site this is their site adam.io and just kind of use it as a as a quick overview and th this here uh, this is showing the ability to open up developer tools within the application natively and inspect every single piece of the application from a H HTML standpoint the whole app is made in JavaScript you can access the app from terminal, uh, install packages from terminal, just like you would do npm, um, things like that. So that's pretty cool. It's got Node.js integration. Uh, it's got uh, it uses packages just like Sublime Text, and it's supported by the community. And best part of all, it's free. So that's one benefit over Sublime, and that's the cost. So going back to this, uh, I do have, I will show you Yeoman, Bauer, and Grunt later on, but first I just want you to see how the, the workflow works. So what I've done is I already generated a, uh, a project, and I'm just going to show you how this all works. And I'm going to start by, use, by using Atom. Atom is broken up as you see here. It's, uh, it's very straightforward. It's got a, a, a file tree on the left, which you can hide or show with the shortcut key. It's got a stylized syntax, which I'm a big fan of. And it works with packages. So let me just expand this real quick and go through some of the packages that I have installed, right? And to do that, you just go to the file menu, go to preferences, shortcut key, command, comma big fan of shortcut keys. Hopefully I won't get carpal tunnel at some point. Uh, but here we go. So these are the packages I have installed. You can install your own by going here, this section, but I'm just going to talk about the ones I have installed real quick. Uh, basically the most useful ones that I have installed are uh, pretty much auto-close HTML, um, auto-complete plus, and remote FTP. I'm just going to go over those three. Remote FTP is basically uh, a tree view FTP client, and you can conf you configure your FTP login information uh, through a JSON file. And if you don't know what JSON is, don't worry about it. it. Once you install this package, it automatically opens up the thing for you. All you have to do is just type out your IP, your path, and your username and password. Uh, so you don't have to you know know a lot about JSON to really figure that out. Um, I mean, I, c I could do that just to show you real quick. So. So let's go back to the project. I'm going to go here, packages. I'm going to go to uh, create FTP config file. And this is what it looks like. So you type in the host, the port, the user and pass, the remote directory, and that's it. See, it's not that intimidating. I know some of you might have thought that was intimidating, but it's not. So anyway, let me go back to preferences and go back into packages. And that's that, and it's free. Uh, the next one is, actually they're all free just so I can stop saying that over and over again. The next one I use is Autocomplete Plus, and it's basically this. 
if you're working on something and you open up a div tag, why do you have to you know type out the closing tag? It should be automated, and that's what that does. Saves a ton of time. The other one is auto prefixer. Um, pardon. Uh, the next one is is auto complete plus. I think I just showed you auto complete HTML. But auto complete plus is actually even cooler than that because if you create a if you type out a class, you notice that I don't have any autocomplete possibilities, right? But if I type, start typing something out, it's going to find it. And the way it works is that it gathers a collection of all your classes in this file and it builds uh, an array uh, and, and lets you choose from that. So, for instance, I'll just show you if I create site wrapper. There's not going to be any possibility to autocomplete because it's the first time I create that class, right? But if I create it here and add it to a container, and then I'm typing out another, I'm opening up another div and adding that class, it will know. It will gather anything you, that's custom or within classes and, and let you see it as an option to autocomplete. So that can save a lot of time when you press tab just to complete that. Yeah, sometimes, uh, messes up but for the most part it works very helpful uh, 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 the other one I add and beautify you know it just kind of beautifies your HTML puts indents and stuff like that uh, highlight line you know this stuff so basically how I'm clicking and it's highlighting that line is what that is and then uh, you can add Emmet you can add a bunch of packages I'm not going to go over that but the, the cool thing is that you can customize it to whatever you need, right? The themes, same thing. Uh, there's default built-in themes here. You can change it to a light theme. Let's just add them light, right? Check it out. This is still dark, right? Ah, that's a separate theme, and that's here. You can change that to whatever you want. Right? I like my darkness. Darkness. Okay. And that's a theme, uh, and you can configure the key bindings. You can basically configure this thing to your heart's content. That's one of the cool features about it. Since it's open source, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. All right, so now I'm going to go into the project and show you how to use Yeoman. All right, so I'm going to go into the project. I'm going to uh, basically close this out here. I am going to try to think about what the easiest way of showing you this. All right, I'm just going to actually delete everything here. So I'm here. Put this to trash. Uh, I'm going to leave Adam open. What I am going to do is I'm going to quit all my terminal windows. I'm going to reopen. I'm going to show you how basically to start from scratch. Uh, so you got to navigate to your uh, your web project folder. In my case, I have a local host here on my Mac, so local host and uh, Adam, yeah. And how you start Yeoman is basically type Yo, set, and then you choose what generator you want, right? And if you're building a web application, you would choose web app. If you're building an Angular application, you choose Angular. If you want to use Gulp instead of Grunt, you choose Gulp web app, and so on, right? There's a bunch of these. You can check out their site to figure out which one you want. But I'm just going to go with the basic one here, web app. It's going to ask you, uh, apart from including out of the box HTML5 boilerplate, jQuery, and Grunt, what else do you want to add? I definitely want to add Bootstrap, right? Okay, so that's checked. SAS, maybe not, maybe not. I'll just do Bootstrap for this project to keep it simple. Uh, I'm going to let this load. This does take anywhere from like 30 seconds to a minute to do. So I'm just be a little patient here. Might want to take a yawn, maybe sneeze. I don't know, stretch your legs, stand up, something. Something to feel like you're not doing anything, right? So what this is basically doing is that it's populating the, the folder structure. I don't know if you noticed, but Adam started populating with files, and this is what it's doing right now. It's got a pre-made template that fetches all these dependencies from GitHub. 
And this web app has by default, uh, not by default, but I made it, I selected Bootstrap. Uh, it comes with Bootstrap, it comes with HTML5 boilerplate and, uh, and jQuery. And it does this from the GitHub libraries or, or repos, pardon me. So this is basically what it's doing. It's just retrieving it from the internet. All right, and it grabs the latest of everything. And there you go. Oops. Let's put this guy out here real quick. So now you see the, the, the directory has been populated with that. And now I have, I have an app folder, I have a bower components. All right, so I'm gonna briefly go over what this just did. Most web applications in today and age follow the same or somewhat similar convention in terms of file structure, uh, directory structure and file naming. So in this case, almost every application uses the folder app, right? Um, and if you open that up, you will see that it's got a default images directory, it's got a scripts directory, it's got a styles directory, and it's got a pre-built uh, main.css in it. So you can already modify this, it's got a fav icon for those that like to change that. And then an index, right? With it's already some bootstrap, it's already HTML5 boilerplate, and it's got a Google Analytics already into it, and all the bootstrap dependencies. Now, I know this word dependencies might seem a little foreign, um, depending on your workflow, but I'll just, I'll explain that in a second, but don't worry, it's not that complicated. And you're going to see like these lines here. This is basically everything that's generated by, uh, um, by Bauer and Yeoman automatically. So you definitely don't want to touch those things. You can add whatever you want below that, or I even think you can do it below. I've never actually done it, but, um, that's basically dynamically generated, right? This all can change on the fly. So Bauer Components, that's the other folder I was going to talk about. This is a collection of all the components that you use in your web project. So let's say you use Bootstrap, jQuery, Animate.css, and Photorama in almost all your projects, right? Okay, check this out. Instead of having to go to the site and manually entering the line, manually downloading it, what you can do is you can search for it using Bauer. And Bauer is a collection of packages. So I'm going to do Bower search. You can also go to their site and do a search there, but the idea is that you don't have to be opening up so many windows to do all this stuff, right? So it's all command based. So Bower search, I'm going to go to Photo ROM. And now look, there's one right there. It's GitHub. It's all pretty much GitHub. So what you do to get that in there, to save it, um, you do Bower install. Photorama, save. And look at that. It added it to your components. The latest version. Did it all right there with one line of code. Pretty neat, huh? That saved you a bunch of time. Anyway, so that's how you add something. And how you work with the, the web application is basically this. You go to, while you're in your project folder, you go to grunt and you go to serve. This is going to create a local server for you to test and create your app with. And let's see here, if I can just put this guy here, put this guy here, so you can see everything that's going on. I'm going to change, let's say, I don't want to say alo alo, I want to say learn about Adam. Save it, instantly updates. See, the grunt aspect of this stack, of this workflow, is constantly watching for any changes. And when you make a change, it updates it automatically on your local server. Pretty cool, huh? So this is probably one of the coolest features. Uh, in addition to that, uh, let's say I added my Photorama, and now I want to add my Photorama, right? Um, I'm going to open up a new terminal window. I'm going to go to my project directory. Adam, yo. Inside your project directory, you go to grunt wire. Now watch this. Okay. Oh, it already added it. Well, this is what's going to show you. But anyway, I'll show you with another, uh, another package. It added the Photorama line without you having to do it. Okay. 
So with that being said, let's say, uh, so you can see it in action, I want to add animate.css to this project as well. So I'm going to go to Bower, I'm going to search, and I'm going to animate.css. Does it have it? Yes, it does. So now I'm going to go to Bower, install uh, animate.css, save. Okay, it's going to add it to your components, and it's going to automatically add it to your file. So you don't have to type out that line. That's cool. I mean, that's probably one of the most time saving features of this whole thing. All right. So with that being said, um, you know, this is pretty much it. And in terms of actually working on modifying your project now, you're asking, well, how do I, you know, this is, I can't just give someone this file structure. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a, a, you can't share it. So what you do is that Grunt has a command for that. So uh, once you you can do this in the same terminal, but once you're done, uh, the control to stop any of these like tasks is Control C. I don't know. If, it took me a while to realize how to do that, but the way I, I canceled that live the local server was Control C, and that basically cancels anything. That's just a, a side note in general. So once I'm in my project folder, I will type Grunt build. And what that will do is that it will create a distribution folder, right? And that distribution folder is ready to be uploaded on any web server. And that code is optimized. It's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, I forgot what the name is, but uh, I'm blanking out here. Uh, it basically just optimizes everything ready for distribution. So you can see here, it got the fonts, it's got the scripts already all in there. And look at the CSS, see? It removes extra spaces, all that good stuff. So all you have to do is if you go into this folder, let's go in here, uh, open Finder, and I'm going to go to Distribution, I'm going to go to Index, you have the whole project here. Right? And this is where you can upload to your web server. Now, other commands that you might find helpful is run test, which will run a test version. Right? And there you go. Voila. And that's the and that's pretty much the workflow. Um so I, as you can see there's many benefits of using this. And I know that it can be a little intimidating at first to set it up and configure it. Uh, I'm going to do another video because that's it's a, it's a separate process. But once you have it set up and once you're used to it, it really, really speeds up your development time for any web project. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions or comments, post it below in the video. And uh, yeah, I'll try to respond as soon as possible. And, Thank you for watching. I hope you have uh, a shorter, more effective, or efficient uh, experiences with your web applications in the future if you use Atom uh, with Yeoman, Bauer, and Grunt. And have a good day.